This is for fifth grade ELA. Um, so who knows where the island of Bali is? Okay, we've already read about how important water is to life on Earth. This book focuses on how important water or er, water is to life on this one small island. It's called Cycle of Rice. Cycle of Life, a story of sustainable farming written by Jane Reynolds. Any guesses based on that title why rice might be important to Bali? Let's find out. Forward. A food staple of half the plant's population, rice is one of the most important crops on earth. It is the core of daily life culture in many parts of the world. To the people living on the small Indonesian island of Bali, rice is life. All the cycles of life are coordinated with the cycles of rice farming. The water cycle and the growing cycle. The island's rich volcanic soil, warm climate, and abundant moisture allow for one of the most productive rice harvests in the world. There is also another reason for Balinesian's success. When it comes to growing rice, they have developed one of the world's most efficient ways of water sharing crop rotation, and the use of natural fertilizers and pest control. Traditional Balinese rice farming is a dynamic model of sustainable farming, a way to grow food while being conscious of the needs of other people and the well-being of the planet. Uh, a gift from the goddess, the cycle of water. High atop a mountain ride ridge on the island of Bali sits a glorious temple. Ulan Danu Batar. Open the sky and the rains in the heavens above. It was built to honor Duwai Danai, a goddess of water. Like people everywhere, the Balinese know they cannot survive without water. It is essential for all life and sacred to their culture. Because of this, the Balinese have built temples such as Ulan Dana Batar to give thanks to Wai Dana for blessing them with pure life going giving water. Bali is surrounded by water, bordered by the Bali Sea to the north and the Indian Ocean to the south. It is one of the more than 17,000 islands that make up the country of Indonesia and Southwest, Southeast Asia. The salty seawater surrounding Bali cannot be used for farming. This, since crops require fresh water to grow, for fresh water farmers must, freshwater farmers must rely on rain that first falls on the island's higher peaks. Volcanoes as tall as 10,000 feet that shape the backbone of Bali. Near volcanic mountains such as Mount Bajor, rain fills crater lakes that feed the island's 80 rivers. From the highest points on the island to the lowest on an ancient elaborate water system flows down the hillsides through the plains and out to the ocean. Although Bali Bali's lakes and rivers mm -hmm. exist naturally... At this time, it's Miss... Um, a human-made marvel of hydro... Engineer has harnessed these waters for more than a thousand years. Good. Okay, um, for more than a thousand years, an interlocking network of tunneled waterways weaves its way through every bit of land on the island, providing residents with fresh water. The water system was built by hand in the 9th century using only what nature provided, earth, logs, and stone. Today, some structures have been replaced or expanded with cement and other models, materials, mu but much of the original framework remains. Wires or div 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 diversionary dams change the natural flow of water so it runs in other directions. Tunnels angling slightly downhill and canals, human-made streams transport water from high mountainsides to lower ground. Aqueducts carry water across busy travel routes and other obstacles. Finally, long irrigation ditches bring the water right into farmers' fields. Okay. Built along the intricate water system like beads on a necklace is a linked network of temples where water ceremonies take place. The holiest of temples, Ulan Dana Matar, sits at the top of this chain above the crater lake, Batar. Fanning out below Unabdane Batar are the Masati temples. These large temples sit above entire farming regions. 
Fires direct water from multiple rivers to form a region's communal water system. Below the Muscati temples are the Ulan Suri temples, which connect with a single wire canal or spring. The water from the Ulan Suri temples supplies many subracks or groups of farms. There is also a separate temple for each subdac as well as the smallest temple for every individual farm. In this way, all points along this length system of water sharing have their own corresponding water temples. Okay, so the question is, so this chart shows how the water temple system in Bali works. What does the system tell you about the culture of Bali's people? Okay, the gyro, jiad, or high priests are mm -hmm. most respected. Mm -hmm. Plus is drawn. Mm -hmm. events near the summit of Batu volcano. This is the most sacred ceremony <laughs> taking place at Ulan Dana Batu. Um, after taking place at Ulan, but after adding other water to the sacred drops, the gyro jihad will distribute holy water to visitors who come to the temple seeking it. Visitors take the holy water back to this community for local water ceremonies and celebrations, giving thanks to the water goddess. These rituals are all part of Agama Tabithra. Rituals performed at the water temples serve many purposes. Besides offering thanks and asking for plenty of water and good crops, these rituals connect people loving in one watershed or area united by a common water source. Gathering together as a community reminds them the others depend on the water too. It is important that every farming family within each sub back has enough fresh water to grow the rice they need to feed themselves. Since farmers must visit and place Place, place offerings at temples along each part of the waterway. The rituals also help to ensure proper supervision and maintenance of the entire water system. So whoever offers to me with devotion a leaf of flower or fruit or water with a pure heart, I accept. Like the Chinese yin and yang, Kakajal Kigala toward the mountains, toward the sea, is the Balinesian concept of balance in nature, encompassing up and down, high and low, sacred and unholy. <laughs> All right, so think about how long these rituals have been taking place. Why do you think the author wants you to know about these Balinesian rituals? What rituals remind you that you're, you're part of a community? Water that began as a rainfall on Bajor Volcano eventually winds its way down the shore of the Indian Ocean in Tana Lot Temple. Here, fresh water streams entire salty ocean water looking beyond Tania Lot to the vast horizon. It is possible to see great clouds formed by evaporating water blowing toward the mountains. The clouds will release the water raining down on Bajor Volcano and Ulandana Bator Temple, and again the water will flow throughout the Bali and back out to the ocean. This perfect natural cycle of water is sacred to all Balinesian people. It is honored daily through temple offerings in the spirit of a connected community, sharing water to ensure a good life for all. So the cycle of water. Par paradise paradise of brightly dressed people carrying plates of lush, luscious fruit and flower offerings on their heads. Follow priests in pure white sarongs as they walk to the temple for the planting celebration. This is the time before each planting season when representatives from the Sabaks come together at the Machete temples at the heads of the water their watersheds. For hundreds of years, these ritual gatherings have linked all the people in the watershed, uni uniting them to separate and share the natural gifts of their island home. Gathering at the Machete temples are beautiful and rich in cultural and tradition, but they are also a time for business. New irrigation projects are approved, disputes are settled, and advice is given for construction and repairs to fields in the water system. For most importantly, the farmers who are representing their subaks must work together to devise the best water sharing schedule for the hundreds of people on the numerous farms within their watershed. The water will flow downhill from subak to subak through canals with dividers to control the agreed upon flow. 
Made up for, of emerald green terrace fields, the Sabaks are engineered like stair steps, creating flat spaces on the hillsides to proof pull the water up for growing rice. Developing water schedules requires complicated planning and organizations. Everyone's needs must be considered in order to maximize the rice yield and benefit the common good. If disputes arise, they are settled by temple priests. When the meetings are finished, Sabak representatives send word to individual farming families within their watershed, telling them when they will be receiving water for their fields.